landscape. Today is the 1st of the October and I've decided to plant our elephant garlics. I will open them and show you. Elephant garlic is a family, it's not actually garlic, it's from a family of uh, leek. We should call him actually bulbing uh, leek or bulb leek and uh, that's what we will be more close to the reality, the truth. Uh, they are very large bulbs, uh, cloves, as you can see. The bulb will be this size, hopefully. I'm sowing them here between these rows of the vegetables. Salad greens for winter. Okay, I have six bulbs here. This um, vegetable is what is actually in uh, some regions of the world is called musiv. They may they mix it with yogurt, and it's very nice when you mix it with yogurt, slicing it or grating it and mixing it with yogurt. It really gives a nice garlicky taste to the mild garlic taste to the yogurt without actually giving that smell of the yogurt. Some people don't like it. So let us sew it up. Use a dibber, which is this tool, handled, a uh, handle attached to a piece of wood and I will make a hole deep enough that the whole bulb goes into it and a little bit of the soil will be on the top of it. So let us do this. Okay, the bulbs are such a huge bulb that I think deeper is not enough for this. So I'll just use a trowel to dig a deep enough hole in here. And I will space them around one foot apart. So one, another one here. The third one I dig here the hole for planting. So in two rows I plant these bulbs. I will do another tree in this drill which is here under my feet. Okay, I have decided to put actually three rows here and two, two, three holes here and two here. So the maximum distance between this bulb and the next one and then between this and the next one here and between there and the next one here and between this and the next one there. And uh, I will, one extra bulb I will be we plant it somewhere else. I'll put the bulbs like this, the lower part which is here, the base, base plate, root plate, should be downward and the top part which is here should face upward. Like that in the soil. We'll put another one here. It's better not big stones be around there. And I will continue with all the others. Okay, I've now planted the bulbs. Five elephant garlic bulbs. Each bulb probably. A clove. Each clove will give you a ball properly and each one of them at least have five uh, cloves. That means I will have 25 cloves next year. I will eat again some of them and then the rest of it can be used as a seed. That one extra one which is here, I will plant it somewhere else. I have sown the five balls, I've co covered them, I've planted them and they're not covered. I will water them now. Okay, I have now a watering can with rows attached to it, a fine rose, and I'll water the bulbs thoroughly. And as the cold gets more, and we go through the season, it gets cold, they will germinate, and uh, you will see the first leaves appearing on the soil. This helps the, the watering helps the good contact between the soil and the bulb, uh, cloths. And that's it. That's how to sow the elephant garlic. 
Every year that I've sowed my plant my garlic cloths, they end up in a bed. They grow a little bit. During the midwinter, you see that they're covered in weeds. Of course, we try to remove the weeds, but that's not enough. So what I'm doing this year is that to plant them between the rows of vegetables, salad greens for winter that I'm growing. The, for example, here we have some uh, lovely spinach in one drill. And we have here some uh, rocket. Rocket, uh, red winged rocket. So between the rows of vegetables and the salad greens, I will plant them this year. The varieties that I'm using is a uh, Carcassonne white garlic, and one um, early purple white garlic and white Casablanca garlic and uh, I will plant them between the rows and because this is already having some uh, vegetables in it the goodness is being shared with all of them in each hole that I dip with a dipper I will add a little bit blood and uh, fish and blood and bone mixture so hoping that it will give it a bit better localized energy nutrients let's go on well I have to open the packs get the garlic out separate the cloves and uh, then start okay this is the bulb of the Carcassonne white uh, garlic is from the Isle of Wight I suppose but originally pro probably from France quite large bulb and now I'm going to separate the cloves when you separate the cloves, you must be careful, don't damage the root plate, which is at this area. You just, with your nail, with your fingers, tease them out, and you can see the bulbs, the cloves are coming out. Now the cloves have been separated. This is what I mean by root plate in the garlic, you should not damage that. If you cut this, the, uh, the garlic will not grow. So, how you plant it, you plant this top on the top, this part on the top. This root plate should be downward. I'll show you. Okay, this is the bulb of the carcass of white, and this is the way you put it. You put it like that, and then you cover it. I will add a little bit of fish and bone and blood, fish bone, fish blood and bone, and then I will cover it. Okay, you can just cover it with your hand, and the garlic will grow after this. Uh, you can water it immediately if you want. So there will be good contact, contact between the garlic clove and the soil. I will also plant the rest of the bulbs that I have here. This carcass on white, like that again. Each bulb gave me one already I planted. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11. 11 cloves, that means uh, probably I will have 11 bulbs, hopefully. Let's go and do it. Okay, now let's open the early purple white garlic. There's one bulb here and I will open it and show you. How it looks. The bulb of the early purple white garlic and how you crack it, how you open the bulb and separate the uh, cloves you tease the gently the garlic by using your finger tip of your finger uh, it's better to use two hands so I'm using two hands I have to cut this video now short yeah um, you open it like that 
The only thing you have to do is to be careful to plant the garlic. Don't damage first this root plate again. This is the part root plate. And plant it like that. So this part will be on the top. This part will be on the bottom. I use uh, the dibber to dig the holes I want. I put a little bit of the fish blood and bone in it so because it's between vegetable rows I want to give them a little bit nutrients so they don't compete with each other for that. Okay I have now with the dibber made a hole I put it at the bottom of the hole and I will put some fish blood and bone in it. Okay this is now done I just covered it with my finger I don't need anything more than that and in this way because the plants will grow around the garlic, uh, the rows of the plants will actually shade this area in the middle. The weeds will not grow, but hopefully the garlic can push through the soil and through all that foliage and come out. I will do the rest of this for this early purple white also. I saw them in this uh, row here. I already planted one, so how many garlics we have here? One, two, three, garlic cloves, four, five, six, or seven, they're quite tiny, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh, we can say ten safely, some of them are very tiny like this one. So we can save ten, uh, ten of the cloves in this garlic bulb it was. See, I've put the deep the holes for planting the cloves of garlic around 20 centimeter apart. You can do it between 15 to 20. Uh, that's that's for this bed is enough. You can do it as you require in your own situation. To sow some white Casablanca garlic, and uh, these are three bulbs. I will open it and show you how they look. This is the way the white Casablanca garlic looks. Um, it's easy to open relatively to others. So I'm just teasing one of them. As you see, it is white and uh, it has good size. Uh, the distance between the bulbs will be 20 centimeter. And you plant it this side, which is the root plate upward. You should not damage this part. You should not remove the skin also. If you remove it, the plant, the bulb will not grow. Most probably. And the top part of it, which is this part, will be upward. Okay, this is the way you take the bulb, put it at the base plate downward. I will add a little bit of uh, fish and blood and bone, and that's it. I will cover it with soil. I'm now covering it. And doing this here between the rows of other vegetables, salad greens, so hopefully this way we will not have a problem of wheat growing around the garlics. It's an experiment, we will see how it is. A large pot that I think I bought it from the Wilkinson for around two pounds last year. There was something else in it. Now it has cropped, it's finished. I'm going to put something else. And this time I'm putting elephant garlic. It seems this year elephant garlics are rare in the shops. I've not seen anywhere else. So many people also were leaving comments, some people uh, were leaving comments that uh, they cannot find elephant garlic and they were surprised at uh, how I found it and they were making comments that they are good size and good value. Um, I have four here which I want to plant in this pot. I've already some compost. There was a bit of weed and other things growing in it beside the crop. So I turned it over upside down and I'm going to dig into it, plant the garlic cloves and then cover it again. I will show you. Okay, the pack recommends 10 centimeters apart the bulb should be planted, but I'll give them more than that. This is around 15 centimeter. And uh, I'm going to sow to plant four of them. I will open the packs and show you. Okay, this is uh, one pack. Let me see how many garlic. Okay, two cloves. Oh, they are nice. They're big. Okay, I plant one of them here. The next one here. 
Okay, the good thing about this gar uh, elephant garlics is that they're British grown, so they're local, they're adapted for climate. So, this is uh, two more cloves, hopefully. Let me see. Oh yeah, large, large clump. Okay, I will plant one here. And you have to plant them in a way that this basal plate, they first of all don't get damaged, so you don't need to squeeze in the soil. Second, you have to be careful that you don't uh, damage this basal plate, root plate. It should be planted like this, the basal plate downward and the uh, sharp pointed side upward. I plant it so you can see. Uh, I have now planted four elephant garlics. One, two, three, four. And uh, to give it extra support and extra nutrition, uh, we can add a bone meal which provides the phosphorus. Phosphorus is good for growing uh, root system. So we want to it grow root system. This is the root set of its rhizom kind of bulb that we actually want. So I add some um, bone meal to this. This is fish blood and bone, very good for potatoes, again a root crop so if you give it a lot of a uh, uh, good growth it has fish uh, blood of the from the slaughterhouse or whatever it is or uh, and also bone so I'm adding it now generally around the soil And it should be buried uh, the size of itself under the soil. So I cover it, but as you see, when I cover it, just barely the top of it is above the soil or barely can be seen. So what I will do, I will add a little bit more soil to this. To make sure the plants are covered. Okay, I have some soil here and uh, I will spread it over the pot where the bulbs are planted. And I will continue until this reaches this level. Okay, I've now covered it. One point I want to say that this takes a while. This will be from in where we are now in October. May, June next year, I will be able to harvest anything from this pot. So until then, I can grow something which doesn't have very deep root system, like lettuces, or something very quick, like uh, uh, radishes. So I will try to use this pot for that. In the same way, also, these will work as a kind of uh, green manure and then as a mulch. They will stop the weeds growing here. So it will exclude the light, whatever grows here, like lettuces and other things. So I may later show another video to you that I have sown something here or planted directly something here. Uh, until then, that's it for elephant garlic planted. Okay, what I have to do also is to water it. So I'm just watering thoroughly. I've already drilled some holes at the bottom of it so it will not get waterlogged. about one centimeter above the level of the, the bottom of the um, pot so all the time there is one centimeter of water at the bottom of it excess of that will be drained by those holes that I have drilled so I thoroughly water this and as you can see it's free draining and the water disappears quickly you see the bubbles appearing So that's what we want, light soil.